One of the major news headlines for most part of the year 2010 was about the whereabouts of then President late Omar Musa Erodwa. He was ill and was hospitalized in an undisclosed location. Erodwa was not at home, but he did not hand over power to his vice, Good Luck Jonathan. Hence, the business of government suffered a great deal. Many rights activists took to the street to demand that Jonathan takes charge of the government since Erodwa was not around. One of them was Yemi Adamolekun. Her involvement in that protest and many others triggered the setting up of the Enough is Enough Nigeria organization. Although the EIE began operations in January 2011 with grants from Omidia Network and MacArthur Foundation, Yemi and her team never for once abandoned the call for a better society. Twelve years after, the team tell its own story in a new book, Footprint, Past, Present, Future, and how it has impacted the Nigerian society. When I started leading EIE, I was clear that our primary audience would be Nigeria's educated elite. My thinking was that it would be easy or easier to get us to act in our enlightened self-interest. It has been a rough road leading an organization that wasn't planned and in some ways didn't have owners. The founding members allowed me to run with it and figure things out as they led their own organizations. While I was grateful for the vote of confidence, it was also a very lonely journey as I didn't know what I was doing half the time. <laughs> it was very fluid and I kind of got stuck trying to make sense of the organization, trying to give it life and figure out what to do as initial advocates focused on entrepreneurship or joint partisan politics. There was unrest in just, killings and unnecessary deaths as well as power vacuum at the federal level. We asked ourselves that, that day, if we were truly creating a country for the future, how do we turn a blind eye to these issues? Foods Launched on Monday in Lagos, Footprints features contributors like Aisha Yusufu, Tunde Bakari, Innocent Idebia, aka Two Baba, Shewu Onigminde, Banky W, and 41 others. Retired career diplomat Christopher Kolade wrote the foreword for the book. While talking about the book, NSAS activist Reno Oduala shared the same opinion with broadcaster Chude Jidongo that the richness of the book lies in the fact that it was written by the real players themselves. Building up on the foundation of people like the executive director of EIE, um, Yemi Adamoleko and, and Chude, you know, uh, we have also been able to cause a bit of trouble and good trouble uh, in this instance, you know, to ask for change, uh, to ask that we have a better country that is different from what we have today, to ask that the Nigeria of today uh, be moved forward, you know, to, to occupy the giant of Africa place that we have always proclaimed that we have, but then you would agree with me that we are nowhere near that position. Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. That vigilance must not be left to EIE alone. Journalists, citizens, everyone must remain vigilant to actions that can erode our civil liberties and chip away our democracy. If anything, EIE reminds us that as citizens, we must play our part because the office of the citizen is the highest in the land. Enough is Enough Nigeria is a network of individuals and organizations committed to instituting a culture of good governance and public accountability in Nigeria through active citizenship. The group has been part of a number of campaigns since it was founded. This includes the hashtag Occupy Nigeria movement in 2012 and the ongoing hashtag Open NAS campaign, which started in 2013. The group also launched the hashtag Office of the Citizen campaign in 2015 to mark its fifth anniversary and started the hashtag One Person campaign in 2020 to celebrate its 10th anniversary. Popular singer, songwriter, music producer, and winner of the inaugural season of Idols West Africa, Timida Kulu, was on hand to entertain the guests. Oba Adeoye, Arise News, Lagos.